Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could all rise, remove your hats, face the flag. Ha! I work with kindergartners. Sorry, you did not need those directions. <laughs> I pledge allegiance. Well, thank you for coming. My name is Becky Lyle. I teach specials at kindergarten and first grade, and I coach the high school speech and debate team. I was thrilled to be given the opportunity to moderate because politics is my jam. I think getting to hear from candidates is an awesome opportunity to become a more informed voter. The purpose of this forum is to simply give you the opportunity as a voter to understand what the candidates stand for and what they would bring to the table as a potential school board trustee. I would like to say thank you to DEA for hosting this uh, forum. I would also like to say thank you to the Douglas Budget, Converse County Bank, and Boys and Girls Club for sponsoring the um, forum. If we could give them all a round of applause, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm just going to cover rules of engagement so we're all clear on what the expectations are. And the, the whole purpose behind this is we want you to have as much information as possible. So we are going to ask the questions. They're going to be given an opportunity to give up to two minutes per answer. The reason for that is so we can potentially get to more questions so you have more knowledge about their stance on various issues. So rules of engagements for candidates. Please be respectful and civil. Please no cell phone use during, <laughs> during the forum. Uh, stay within the time frames. Please no name calling, personal attacks toward each other, other candidates, sponsors, moderator, or audience. Rules of engagement for the audience. Please be respectful and civil. Due to time constraints, please hold applause and comments until the end of the forum. No verbal abuse will be tolerated. If anyone is warned and does not abide by these expectations, they will be asked to leave the forum. So with that, here's how the, it's going to work. The candidates are going to each be given two minutes to give you an introduction. We have set them alphabetically as they are listed on the program that you got, which is how they will appear on the ballot. So that's just purposely so you can see more succinctly if you take notes or whatever, you understand what you're writing for each person. So they're going to be given two minutes each to introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into the questions. Just let me get situated. I don't want to time. Yeah, if you would pick up the mic. Sorry, guys. So candidates, you are going to pick up the mics and just leave them on the whole time. You'll set it down when you're not speaking, but pass it to the person at your table next to you after you've answered. They're on already. Yep. You ready? Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Jim Bollinger. Um, I'm married to Penny. Uh, Penny and I have a blended family. We have four children and six grandchildren. I am the managing director of the Dave Johnston Power Plant in Glen Rock, Wyoming, and I'm the managing director of the Wyadak Power Plant in Gillette, Wyoming. Uh, I had the pleasure to serve on this board from 2014 to 2018, and due to some personal changes in my life, I was unable to run for re-election. Uh, at this time, I'm able to run for re-election, so that's why I'm here tonight. Thank you. First of all, I'd, oh, excuse me. I'd like to thank everybody and thank all the people that put the time and effort into putting this on. I think this is a, a very good and important part of, part of the process. Um, for those of you that do know me, I promise I've grown up a little bit since I was younger. <laughs> for those of you that don't know me, my name is Jeremiah Dar. I'm married to, full disclosure, Amanda Dar. She works in the district. And... Uh, Together we have three wonderful children, and they're the reasons that I'm here. I have, I have a uh, two that are currently in this in the district, and one that's going to be. And I just want to be here to present a positive, open-minded attitude, and be a uh, positive influence in in this this district. I, <coughs> okay, uh, my name is Doug Horner. And uh, 
I guess uh, I have been working for or with the school district since uh, for 37 years. Uh, and I have had the pleasure of doing just about everything in the school district that there is. Uh, I've been in the classroom. I was in the classroom for 20 years. I have a degree in industrial arts education. Um, then from then on, then I've been a, a coach. I've been a referee. Um, I've been uh, uh, on bu buses with kids before I was a bus driver, uh, going to different things like the Rockies games and things like that. Um, so I've, I've kind of settled down a little bit now and uh, I'm not working for the district, but uh, over the past 37 years, uh, the people who know me and that have been around uh, know that I have been there for the kids for 37 years. I don't just talk about it, I do it. And I did it and I still do it. And I still love the kids. And so maybe this is a way that I can bring back some fatherly, grandfatherly uh, living advice to help out the board members to see things. Uh, I was on a school board for seven years uh, back in the 90s. Uh, then I had to get off the school board because of a conflict of interest uh, because I was a substitute teacher. But uh, I was always there for the kids. And, uh, <coughs> but to maybe give a little bit of ideas and things that happen on the school board and things maybe I did wrong on the school board the first time that I think I can do better with. Uh, and uh, I think transparency, school board transparency is a big thing. And honesty, uh, I'm an honest person. Ask me a question, I'll give you an honest answer. Ask me a question. If I don't know the answer, I will find the question out. But on top of that, those of you that know me, I will get back with you and tell you the answer. Uh, so I have no kids in school. Um, uh, my bo both my kids have grown up. I'm a grandpa. Uh, so uh, I can come back and, and kind of give my two cents and uh, hopefully help the school district become better for our kids. Thank you. I'm Mark Hoar. Uh, I'm married to Mandy, and we have three kids, two of which have gone through the district already. Uh, our youngest is still in. He's in, in Walker Creek this year. Um, it, it's hard for me personally to sit up here and tell you how great I am and everything. I hope my actions over the last eight years on the school board speak a lot for me. Uh, we. I've kind of been reflecting since running and the district and the board themselves, I feel we have come a long ways in the last eight years. Uh, I feel that there's still some more things to go and do, so I'm running again for two more years. I'd appreciate your vote, thank you. Good evening, I'm Jeff Castle. Um, thank you for being here as well. I'm married to Tina Castle. I have two wonderful daughters, Gracie and Cassidy. Both went to school here. I graduated high school here. <coughs> um, I've lived here the majority of my life. Um, I'm here because I think there's some real dangerous thinking out there right now that, that can hurt our community, can hurt our kids. And I think through community help and um, honest conversation with each other, um, we can move through just about anything. This community has been awesome when it comes to helping each other out my whole life. I mean, you guys step up all the time for people in need, and uh, I think our future is in need. I think um, our teachers are doing an awesome job. I think uh, we can do a little bit more to help them out. Um, and with some of these questions, I can elaborate more on that. But thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And um, enjoy your evening. Hi, I'm Tania Malone. I'm a single mom of two boys. Um, one is currently in school. And as some have already said, I'm also here for them. I graduated as well from here. And I just really valued my education. And I want to help them have a lot of value in their education as well. 
I currently work with the Boys and Girls Club. I am the team specialist, and I also work with independent living um, as a coordinator through Goodwill Services of Wyoming. So I help youth that are 14 to 21 that have been in the foster care system. Um, I also have previous board experience. I am currently the president-elect of the National Association of Social Workers Wyoming chapter and also a board member on the Converse County Hope Center. And I just, I really want to help our community and be a part and, and help our kids because they're our future and they need us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa Patterson. I have been a resident here in Douglas for over 15 years. Um, I've had four boys go through and I now have a granddaughter that's here in the school system. Um, they've done wonderful here. I believe in this place. Um, I'm currently a community prevention specialist here for the last 10 years. And I think that brings a little bit of a, a unique perspective to try to help guide some of the things that, that maybe people are struggling with here in our community. Thank you. Hello, um, thank you all for coming um, to hear from all of us candidates. Um, my name is Mandy Seipel. And this is much intimidating um, to speak to adults than what I'm used to as children in the classroom. Um, with that said, my name is Mandy Seipel, and I'm married to Lee J. Seipel. And we have four kids in the school district. Um, one of them actually just graduated, so we currently have three. Um, like Doug, I also have background in education here in Douglas. Um, I just recently um, resigned to go ahead and homeschool my child with disabilities. Um, I'm hoping between my background in education and teaching that I can be a unique perspective into the team of the school board and be able to be for the kids and um, collaborate with the community and be a voice and be a part of all the stakeholders um, for everyone. and. Um, lastly, I'm just currently, um, like I said, I'm homeschooling a child, but I'm also a part of the community. I just recently got my respite provider li license to be able to work with children and adults. And I hope that this next step into my kind of role and who I want to go with and be able to um, help children that um, I can be an asset to um, the school board. So thank you for coming and hearing all of us out here. Appreciate it. Hi, my name is Ty Tillard. Um, I'm running for this just to support our community. My wife, Megan, and I, we have two kids in the district now, have a couple that are already out. Um, my kids are the fifth generation of my family that's been in this community, and we plan on here being here a lot longer. So I want to be part of making this, uh, our school system is, is uh, as good as it can be. And uh, I will listen to anybody and have an open mind, so I hope if I get in, you're willing to talk to me and I can pass it on. Um, thanks for coming, and good luck to everybody here. So the first question that we're gonna, that we sent three questions to the candidates that they could have time to prepare for. So I'm gonna read the first question, and the way it's gonna go, uh, Mr. Bollinger is gonna answer this first, and then we'll go down the line. You guys will all answer the first question and then we'll proceed. We're gonna do two minutes per answer. If you don't need the two minutes, you don't have to have it, but it's available to you. I'll continue the visual timer. The first question is this. Our district has a guaranteed viable curriculum. Please explain your understanding of what that is and the role that the board plays in its delivery. <coughs> Thank you. So I've had a, a little bit of exposure to the GVC. Um, the first time that I was on the board and uh, saw the GVCs, the superintendent had presented them at a board retreat and was showing how the GVCs align with the board missions and visions. So basically in a nutshell, what I understand is the feds set core standards. From that, the Wyoming state sets Wyoming state standards. And then Commerce County School District they build a core group of folks to look at this and out of that 
They, they'll represent every grade and every subject matter and then build the GVCs from there. Um, the important part to the GVCs is the district will constantly monitor these and, and via, it could be testing, let, let's say uh, YTOP testing. And then wherever they find a deficiency, um, they'll make adjustments to the GVC. So it's very dynamic. Uh, I believe part of the question was, does the board drive the GVCs? Um, I personally don't believe the board drives the GVCs. Um, the teachers, staff, administration, that's who's driving the GVCs. The board supports the GVCs. Thank you. Yes, um, as far as the GVCs, it's the guaranteed is that every student receives the potential and the right outcomes for learning so that every student has the same opportunity for the same same uh, same education um, as far as the viable part that is a set of standards as he's elaborated that the federal the state and then uh, our local district has come up with that makes it that uh, says that that it's the the appropriate knowledge for the kids to move on each grade has a set has a separate as far as the boards boards involvement I think the board's role is there to support and provide a uh, provide the the right um, how do I say? the right uh, I guess um, information to the teachers to carry out those GVCs. The only time the board, he sh they should just help. If, if goals aren't being met, then the board can step in and help figure out what they can do to help provide that. Well, and I've been around a while with uh, no, student, or no student left behind and a lot of these federal things that, that work really good. Uh, in a utopian society, but when it comes right down to everyday people, we're all different. We all need different things. Um, I'm not familiar with the, the GVC that much. Uh, I have talked to some people, and uh, I guess it's what they've told me this is, as a teacher, it's what you can do to help your kids grow and learn, and to be there for each kid that is in your class or in your care to find out what that kid's needs are every every kid's going to be different all of us are different so we need to find out what specific needs or they find out what specific needs those kids are and then help them on their way to be able to to live up and to attain those goals um, the board uh, when I was on the board it was always been one of looking down the road and setting up this is what we would like this is what we would like to see this is what we hope our kids will be but the people who put it into play are the superintendents and the, and the uh, administrative board. And so we need to stay in touch with them. They need to stay in touch with us to make sure that, that what we or what the people have asked us to do to make our kids and help our kids be better and do better and grow better, that we are putting that into our school district. But uh, the, the superintendent and the administrators are actually the one on one that, that put that into effect. Thank you. The board's main duty on this is oversight. Um, basically, as stated before, uh, you know, is it guaranteed? Does every child in, say, third grade have the opportunity in each class to get taught the same curriculum? Will it be taught to every student? That's your guarantee. Uh, for your uh, viable, is it doable? How, how do you go about teaching each and every student in, say, third grade that standard? Well, that's the curriculum director's job. She meets with teacher, teachers, and they go through this, and they set a plan in motion 
of the curriculum they need to do this. And then, you know, it goes on up the chain. And basically, the board, the curriculum director, she reports to us once, twice a year back on this and keeps us informed. And it's just a big plan in motion, and it is really set down below the board level. You approve it and all, but it's basically a big plan set to where your curriculum is meeting s the state standards, all the standards handed down to us. Um, and so we basically approve it by being reported back to a couple times a year. Thank you. I'll just ask you a question. How many before tonight have heard about the GBC? Quite a few of you. Um, how many are in the school district? There you go. Okay. Um, well, to be honest, I learned about this at 6.05 last night. Um, today I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with some of my teacher friends. They used to be in the district for five years in the maintenance department. <coughs> and just asking them how they felt about um, how it's run, um, how it's um, put into place, and um, doing a lot of online research. Um, it said that if you were to teach all the standards in the GVC, it would take 23 years. That's a lot of standards. Um, so the people that are putting the standards in place, um, they're basing it on a lot of testing, previous year testing on the kids. Um, what what they want to see in the kids, and this is, um, I haven't seen it up close, so this is my view of what it, what it looks like. Um, I think the thing that I don't hear a lot from, or the people I don't hear a lot from, are the teachers, um, and they're the ones actually Im implementing these standards, and uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, and that's something I'd like to dive into as a board member, is finding out how the teachers feel about the standards that are, that are driving our, edu our kids' education. Um, are we making them life ready? You know, and that's the, the bottom line. Um, are our kids ready to get out into the world and be productive? The company I work at um, right now in Casper, trying to find competent help right now is just, off the chart crazy. Um, okay, sorry, thank you. So from what I understand, the Wyoming Department of Education is the one that sets the standards, and then the board is the one that has to make sure that it's being followed. Um, and I mean, we, we want a guarantee that students have equal access to all of the information. And the other part is that it's a set of knowledge and skills that each child can take with them. And I understand absolutely why we have to have the standards. And I know that as a board, we need to make sure that they're being followed from the superintendent down to the teachers and educators and all of that stuff. And so I think it's really important that we have a set of standards that we do have our kids follow that we know, granted, yes, not all of them are going to be perfect for all of our kids, um, but we know that, you know, it's a set of standards that the state puts in front of us. So um, public speaking may not be my forte, so I, I have like a prepared statement because I'm a big fan of data and research and really digging into like what something is. So um, it's my understanding that this means that the standard curriculum and proficiency scales are passed from the State Board of Education to the school districts and then disseminated to the schools. This is to ensure that there is a continuity of standard educational requirements that are followed. The board plays a role by supporting through the mission and vision of the school district and the strategic goals that have been set. I think that, that it's really important that people understand that the board's job in this is not to necessarily dictate everything it's to support the people that we've entrusted to put in place. 
to do this, these things. And so I just want to be able to be there as part of the community and support the people that we have because I think that they're doing a good job and I think that they're capable. Um, I'm going to kind of go back kind of with Jeff, you know, with GVC, like the raise of hands, you know, and how many are staff members. And um, I also had the privilege of going to the professional development of GVC and being part of that process. Um, and so I'm not going to go into the definitional part of it, really. I think they've explained it pretty well. I'm going to go more into the curriculum and maybe what the board's responsibility is. Um, curriculum is huge and you know I rely you know especially being in the position I have with working with the teachers and being the teacher um, as a reading specialist I worked in numerous meetings about what we were teaching what the standards were how it was going to be taught what the curriculum is I think we need to continue to rely on the teachers not just you know one person but a group of people all stakeholders um, to be transparent, you know, if people have questions about, you know, what is being taught or what curriculum, you know, we need to, all stakeholders need to be a team and be involved in that process. Um, from what I understand is that the school board, um, I don't know currently right now if they still have a curriculum committee, but I think I would be a huge asset into that committee being the background and experience that I have. I know that some of our recent scores kind of show that maybe we do need to make a little bit of some adjustments and rely on those teachers and the admin and all people that teach the kids to be able to maybe make some adjustments so we can make some of those goals in our testing and to reflect. Um, from what I understand, the board actually adapts the curriculum, the materials and the, prat the instructional practices and then they support and the teachers deliver that time. So um, I'm open to be able to be a part of that team. My timer went off, didn't it, Becky? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, as far as the standards go, um, what I've learned is that there is a bunch of them and the teachers and the administration, they decide what the kids need. And, and I feel as a board, it's our job to support who is hired and to be confident and uh, diligent in who gets hired and who is um, deciding these things. And, you know, if we need to trust the teachers and, and uh, support them in, in delivering these standards and uh, be aware of if, if we're not getting the test scores that we need, that then we need to make adjustments. And like I said, uh, once again, just support the teachers. <laughs> Um, Jeremiah, you'll be the first to answer this next question, and then we'll go successively down, and Jim will come back to you to finish. The second question is this. How does the board determine if we are spending our resources wisely and where those resources should be spent? Right now, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to be a part of this board was I had questions about some of the finances and the spending but until I'm involved in the situation or know the stipulations that are attached to the funds that are provided, I can't, I can't pass judgment. I think the, the role of the board as far as spending is to, find, is to make sure that the money is spent in the, in the best way to affect the most amount of kids and provide the, the, the most positive impact on our kids. So if that means that you spend a bunch of money to help out one kid, but it helps him in, in a greater way than sending that same amount of money on a bunch of kids that, that doesn't, it doesn't really infect, uh, affect them very much, I think that that's the board's job is to make that decision and decide which, which way to go. Um, it is the board's job to be financially responsible with the taxpayer's money. I realize that there's always stipulations when we do get funds, but we need to be as smart and conscientious about how we spend it as possible. Well, I agree with Jeremiah on a lot of things. Um, I believe that, that uh, the board 
spends the money by what the district needs. And as a person may have an idea of what's going on, but when they g actually do get on the board, <coughs> they can they see a lot of times things that aren't as black and white as they think that it is, or there's a bigger picture that may come into play that you are uh, involved with, and so that you can see a bigger picture of what the funds are being used for and why they're being used for, and again, how they are helping our kids, how they are, are there to help our kids become better, to become smarter, to become better people as, as they grow up. Uh, but I think that it would also help, uh, and like I say, I've been on a school bus for now about 15, 16 years, so uh, I'm kind of out of the loop on some of the things, but, but if, if I guess I was always that way when I was growing up and the different jobs that I've had and the bosses that I've had is, is that we need to be transparent and be honest. Uh, if a person is honest and transparent, I believe that the people, if somebody calls, up, calls you up again and asks you a question, then we need to find out what the answer is. And maybe I've heard of some of the things that, that hasn't been real, should I said happy, people are unhappy, that's why a lot of people usually are running for the board. Uh, but maybe if, uh, uh, if we were, or, the, or myself, or whoever, was, was more honest with the people and telling them, this is what I feel. They may not like it, but sometimes we are elected, hired by the people to do a job. And so I think when the people ask, we need to be able to answer them. But we still are there to, to, to help our district be the best that it can be. There's two ways that the board checks themselves, basically, and that's with the budget and the resource allocation plan. Uh, a few years ago, we came up with the resource allocation pro, uh, plan to give the district, you know, a chance to submit their budgets and everything, and then that basically tells them what they have to spend for the year. Uh, which out of our budget, 82% of that goes to teacher salaries and staff. That sounds like quite a bit, but when you figure you're trying to keep and retain quality teachers, it, that doesn't go far enough to tell all of you the truth. Um, I'm getting nervous, but anyhow, you know, I'm afraid maybe the teachers might take pot shot at me, but anyhow, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like, or it sounds like a whole lot, but we're average with the, uh, the districts our size and below some of them of what they spend on salaries. Um, so, you know, I think, I just wish there was more money to play with, actually, thank you. I'm working in the maintenance department with the school district. I had the opportunity to, um, <clears throat> I was responsible for the plumbing in the district, the irrigation in the district, um, and we were responsible to an extent for our yearly budget for that each department, each tech had their own department. And we were allotted a certain amount of money that we could spend for that year. And seeing the infrastructure and the shape the infrastructure is in in our school district, um, it's, it can be a little daunting trying to put numbers on getting some of this stuff repaired or replaced. So I understand that, you know, the state's only going to allocate so much money to our school district. And I think the school board, um, their role in that in improving these budgets um, is a very sensitive one. And the community does need to be involved in these decisions. I've had a lot of people ask, you know, What's going on? Why are we doing this? And I don't. I can't tell you. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why we were doing the things we were doing. You know, in, in our minds, we're seeing things that we could probably spend money differently. But you know, there's a lot of different budgets that that money's got to come from. So you can't. You can't look at it like we have one big pool of of money that we can just spend on anything. There's different monies allocated for different things. So. 
I think being a school board member, you know, is just sitting down and including the community and talking about what is needed to make our kids' life ready. Thank you. So I've been on, as I've said before, a couple boards. And so when it comes to funding, um, a lot of the funding that comes in, whether it's grants or government or whatever, they have a lot of stipulations. And you have to make sure that the money is getting spent where it's supposed to get spent. And you have to have documentation and proof that you are doing that. So I know that the superintendent also brings a budget to the board and then the board has to also approve that. And so the board is a lot of oversight and making sure that the money is getting spent where it's supposed to be per the regulations and the laws. And then the board absolutely has the possibility to, you know, make suggestions and, p and changes if it's applicable. But overall, it really has to do with where the money is coming from and where it is designated to go. I too work with a lot of federal and state funds in my job, so I, I agree, I understand what everybody is saying about it comes from different pools and everybody has got their own stipulations on it. You know, but we've got to like base our decisions on data and then going back and, and reevaluating things and seeing where they are because we can't look at 2019's budget in 2020 because everybody knows everything changed. So we, we have to go back and reevaluate every year to make sure that we're allocating the money in the right ways for the right people every time, all the kids. Thank you. I think um, Ty and I are feeling like being at the end, we're repeating a little bit of some things, but, um, <laughs> and we keep wanting to grab each other's microphones, but, um, you know, I think all agree, like certain funds are, you know, stipulated for specific things. Um, do I have all the answers? Do I know everything about how the, you know, money is spent in the district? No, I'm, you know, open to learning and, you know, trying to help the community to be able to understand, because I know that that can be confusing as we've seen some concerns about that. Um, you know, it'd be nice for the stakeholders to all kind of be on the same page so that there isn't that confusion when we see something new come up in the district, then all of a sudden they're like, well, where did that money come from? Um, even being in the district, you know, some of it may not make all sense to me, but I will be a person that can be, you know, to learn if I don't know the answer to a question or if I'm unknowledgeable about something, um, I'm willing to get those answers. Um, it sounds like that at some point there's a public hearing that um, where there's not always a lot of involvement where community can go to and, you know, talk about those things. And so hopefully maybe there's some solutions we can get to to help, you know, inform the community of what those um, budget is. Um, it sounds like that we used the previous budget and sometimes there's things that, you know, change in within a year. So hopefully that we can work as all stakeholders to be able to understand that and make decisions where they need to go so that we ultimately um, help the kiddos. So thank you. Yeah, the, the, the budget thing could be pretty uh, sensitive. You know, you see all this money being spent and people get frustrated, but I'm, I'm excited to learn, you know, when I get on the board or if I get on the board, uh, how that money is allocated because some, there might be a bunch somewhere, but it can't be spent where the public thinks it need, is needed. Um, I think as a board member, we need to be there to, you know, to, to judge what between the needs and the wants and be transparent with the community why that money's going there and and why we it didn't go other places and you know we need to try to make sure that it goes to the to the the biggest needs which most help the kids okay we're going to move on to question three doug you're going to oh sorry i'm yeah. sorry jim <laughs> psych you're fine. i'm writing down the order and i skipped you sorry <laughs> go for it you're fine <laughs> um, this is one of the largest roles for the board is the finances absolutely every single expenditure is reviewed and approved monthly um, the the budget 
expenditures are made aware to the board well, well in advance of any board meeting. So you have plenty of time to go through them. And if you have questions, um, you should be asking those at that time, not at a board meeting. Um, so th there should never ever be a surprise in, in the budget. Now for a large capital type project that uh, let's say a school improvement, um, those you have months to review, ask questions, do cost analysis, um, get competitive bids. Um, there's, there's no way that can come as a surprise to you as a board member. Um, one thing, when I was on the board previously where I believe we failed the community, one of the projects that we did was the LED lighting on the football field. Um, was the lighting on the field adequate? Probably. Um, did it have some dark spots? Definitely. Um, the, the part we didn't, a after we did that project, community drives by and it looks like we built the sun out there. And, and I know what they're thinking, where in the world did you get the money to do that? The, the part we didn't communicate, the money we saved in demand charges on our electric bill paid for the project and we improved it for the children. Those are the types of things that we have to do as a responsible board member. Thank you. Okay, Doug, you're gonna be answering question number three first. Just gonna tell you, bud, you've been tight on time, so just watch that two minutes. <laughs> Here's the question number three. How will you, as a CCSD1 trustee, actively ensure the physical and mental health and safety of all students within the district, including our LGBTQ plus population? Once again, <coughs> I have not really heard a lot about that in our district. I've heard some of problems that they've had across the country, but I have not seen a lot of it in our district. But I do believe that, and, and I have been raised with it, that I used to try to teach it in the classroom uh, when I was there to talk to the kids on the bus when I drove. Uh, and I finally came up with an anagram of it, is CPR-R. And I think every American every person in the world has a right to start off with CPR-R, and that's courtesy, politeness, respect, and responsibility. So when we are looking at any of the kids we have, we need to find a way, if they're, not, if they're learning differently, to help them in a different way. Uh, there are questions I have uh, coming on the board that I don't know if they're doing it or not, but uh, we used to have uh, schools here that uh, actually my wife was in one of the schools uh, and then helped the kids that uh, they had a hard time being in the classroom so they taught them in a different a different way in a different building they're still part of the school district and they still taught them the curriculum of the school district but they taught them in a different way because everybody learns differently and I know she did a good job because kids 25 years later are still sending her Christmas cards thanking her for the help that they got. Now, Doug, we need to yield your time. Yes, okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, thank you. I uh, kind of noticed a popular theme with these three questions so far, and it's not the board's job to micromanage. Uh, the So far, there's the proper policies in place to address the safety and mental welfare of all the students. Um, I emphasize all the students, not just particular groups, all students, as staff, everybody included in the district should be safe and, you know, have the mental health and all that. We provide counselors, we have a crisis management team, you know, and the eight years I've been on the board, we've done a lot for safety. There's uh, video cameras in all the schools now. Um, they're, I forget what the system's called, but out on outside when they're on the field and everything, foul weather or um, any type of lockdown incident will be you know, announced out there and uh, tell them where to go. Uh, there's you know, we've put radios in all these schools now to where they can, 
we can get a hold of transportation, they can get a hold of rural schools, they can get a hold of everybody, you know, where your cell phones don't work. We've done a lot to ensure the proper uh, channels are followed to protect everybody. It, there's been a lot of hard work and everything that's gone into that and a lot of money gone into those. Um, some of them were through grants and whatnot, but we've done a lot to ensure the safety of our district. Thank you. Again, coming from the maintenance department in the school district, uh, we have some, some very aged schools in our district. One very aged school that's, um, in my mind, not up to the security standard it should be is primary school. Um, we still have classrooms without doors in the primary school. We still have classrooms in intermediate school without doors. Um, so to me, Uvalde, Texas was an open door. The guy walked in an unlocked door. And at any given time, if you walk to high school, you know, the shops will have their, their overhead doors up. Um, there used to be gates on those, those block walls back there when I was in high school. But now you can just walk into the shop. And a lot of times, the weight room door will be open. You know, that's, that's my kind of security that I'm thinking of right now. I'm thinking about if there's an open door in the school and these classrooms don't have doors, how are these guys supposed to protect themselves? Pushing a bookcase in front of an opening? That's not good enough for me. So I would, I would like to be on the board and come up with ways that we can find solutions to these problems. Because, you know, the it's not going to happen in the attitude doesn't work. So that, in my mind, is security. As far as mental health goes, I think we've got some of the greatest counselors on the planet in our school district. And um, I know that our kids are, if they can't handle it, they know somebody that can. And that's the thing, is we always go to where the help is. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. So one thing that any member on the board, any member in the audience even, that can do to help is to advocate for inclusivity for all of our youth. Because it doesn't matter. It, you're, you're one of our kids, and you should be treated the exact same way as all the other ones. There, there's no ifs, ands, or bats, buts about that. But the other thing that, like, I personally, I'm a social worker, and so I really deal with a lot of mental health, and I, that's like one of my big things, mental health matters. Um, it's, in, it's okay to not be okay, and I think that's something that all of our kids could be taught every now and again. You know, we could do um, mental health matters days, teach our kids um, and our educators, you know, ways to battle mental health problems. Um, the more you know, the better, the more power you have to battle it and safety and, I mean, all of that, the more you know and the better you can handle it. Um, I myself um, have always been a helper and I always want to help the youth, the kids, anybody that's within my vicinity. Um, it's just who I am and I think the more that we do, the more tools that we give our kids and our instructors, the better they're gonna be prepared to handle anything that comes at them. So one of the things that I do in my day job is I help to provide suicide prevention services and training to anybody and many people across our district already. Um, I know that these are already provided in our schools. I know that our kids are hurting, especially after COVID. Um, our adults are hurting. Every time there's a boom or bust cycle, it hits our community really hard. And so I think that it's really important to, to try to break down some of the stigma involved with that. And, and as you said, you know, mental health is health. And as soon as we, we come together and we realize that, I, I mean, I've seen this community come together so many times to support each other. And while that's kind of a scary subject, I think it's a way that we can all continue to support each other and, and work on mental health services and, and making sure that people know that it's okay to reach out. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna actually kind of take two avenues. Um, 
I want to commend, like, in the fast, past 14 years, I've actually been able to witness from us having no kind of security system when we check into the office and having, you know, props to us making that progress. Um, like Jeff, there are some things still concerning. I mean, I've taught third grade, I've taught rural school, um, a reading specialist, and sometimes when we do our drills, it's still in the back of the mind, like, you know, are we going to be as safe with the, with the lack of doors in some of our not having doors um, and the way that we're teaching those practices of being safe. Um, so there's always room for improvement in there, and I think it'd be great to be able to look into those avenues. Um, as far as the physical and mental health and the safety, I think our kids are coming to school with a lot of things. I mean, we have kids that come in and out of the school district, and there's a lot of things that they come into. So I think, you know, teaching the whole child, um, making sure, you know, how we have any early intervention, um, you know, our you know, if we need extra counselors, then we need extra counselors, um, making sure that we tie in the community, the wraparound services. Um, also, you know, the, you know, our character education, you know, kind of taking a focus on teaching those traits so that they can build their coping skills and their mental awareness and being able to, you know, be involved in those community type things. I think we kind of have, you know, Sometimes we take the, you know, curriculum and the, the academics, and maybe if we can take a little bit more pride in some of those character education things as well. Um, thank you. I'm also uh, very impressed with uh, how safe I feel with my kids in school, the, the, the steps that have been made to, for the security, and, you know, some of the things I hadn't thought about, like Jeff was saying, that there is, there's th more things that need done, and... I'm confident that, you know, the school board and our school district will keep keep those in mind. Um, the mental health, you know, it doesn't matter what community you're from or wh how, what, how you see yourself. It, it's very important for all the students to get treated the same and different in their own way. And I'm very confident in our teachers and administration, how concerned they are with the kids and how much they care. And, you know, I think the board is is here to oversee that and make sure that we keep moving forward. But uh, I am confident in, in our teachers and how they feel about the kids. And I don't think it matters to, to most of them that, you know, who you are or where you're from, they will take care of you. It, you know, and we need to t make kids aware that, yeah, the help is there and to be open and honest with each other and, and respectful. So I actually don't believe this is uh, a board function. Um, and what I mean by that is I believe the board's function is to have policies in place that don't allow discrimination or harassment. Um, it's the teacher, staff, and administration that drive those policies to make sure there is no discrimination or harassment. Um, however, if there was an incident that was raised to a board level I believe at that point the superintendent and the human resource officer would investigate whatever the allegations are, come up with the findings to, to those allegations, keep the board apprised of that, and, and, and resolve it from there. Um, I think simply by having an identifier in this a question is appalling, because it does not matter. If you're pink, green, purple, blue, I don't care. All children, all faculty, all employees are entitled to a discrimination-free, harassment-free, and safe work environment. I couldn't agree more with that statement there. Um, one thing that I think nobody's mentioned here that I think is as big a thing that we need to discuss is bullying. It's been around forever. It's been a cause for mental health issues as well as physical issues since, since forever. I think more, I know we have initiatives for anti-bullying, but I, I think we can always do better to try and limit that. And that helps as far as the children goes. As far as the outside influence goes, I'm very proud of the, the steps that have been made as, as we've talked about about improving the security in our schools. Do we have the issues, the no doors, as people have mentioned before? Yes, but those can be addressed 
without the board needing to push that. It just, as long as we get the right things, the right um, ideas pointed out, the board's job is just to oversee and set policy. It's not so much to force or push any agenda. It had been requested by a board candidate that we would potentially take a bathroom break. So we are going to just take a break for a quick five minutes so these guys can refresh if they need to. We'll be back in five minutes for the rest of the questions that we will pull from our random selection. Guys, if you could go ahead and grab your seats again. We're going to get back to more questions. For the sake of opportunity to have Mandy and Ty have a little first chance to answer, we're going to flip the order. So we will start with Ty with this next series of questions. I would like to clarify that all the questions um, were generated from school board forums across the United States. So we gleaned that information as questions that have been asked to candidates across the United States within various districts. So the questions that have been asked and generated are ones that were generated in that fashion. So we're going to pull from a random series of questions. We'll see how many we're able to get through. Give me just a second. So Ty will go to you first. This question is, What is your understanding of social emotional learning? I guess I don't have much of an understanding of social <laughs> emotional learning. <laughs> I, if that's a statement, I, I guess I don't think I've ever heard. So I, I don't know. Uh oh. It's <laughs> a fair answer. If that's your answer, you can go on. Mandy, go ahead oh, and answer. I get the same question. Is that yes. right? Oh, okay. Well, I feel like it's like a, a pageant or something. You pulled a question out of the hat. Um, my understanding of socio-emotional learning is taking, you know, um, the emotional, um, the social, and kind of blending those together and, you know, putting it into learning, you know, where the students are around other students. So that's the social part. Um, you know, you also have their emotions. So that's a lot of those things putting together. Um, there's a lot of, you know, differences between the socio-emotional learning that's kind of floating around there. But I think if you just kind of stick to, you know, what kind of the word says, it's about the learning and taking those emotions and those kind of learning um, tasks. Um, I'll be like, Ty, I don't have the answers to everything. I'm not going to know everything, even if I have some of the background, but I'm willing to dive and to make sure that if there's more that we need to learn about that, whatever's best for students, I'm willing to learn more about that. To so Is this going to the, oh, thank you. It's my understanding that social emotional learning is whenever you look at the student or the child, holistically and so you're meeting them basically where they are at so if you have a student that is really struggling at home or not sleeping that's going to really affect their their state of learning in the school so looking at them individually and holistically um, as where they are and what do they need in order to be able to use the, the learning environment to the best of their ability Yes, um, from a mental health standpoint, um, if our kids aren't, they don't have that s emotional standing, they can't really learn really well. So it's really important to take a bigger look at the bigger picture and make sure that their home life is good, that they're, they're getting enough to eat, they're getting enough sleep, that kind of stuff. It's really important for their mental health and their emotional state and taking the social, like what's happening around them, whether it's in the classroom or a bigger picture, you know, maybe things at home, dad got laid off, some anything like that. That really has to take into account because their their social handle or affects their mental and it affects how they learn. 
Okay, I learned a lot of stuff tonight, so um, thank you for being there and explaining that to me because I didn't, I could make a guess, but I'm not going to do that because I really don't know what it is either. Yeah, you kind of waylaid all of us, I think, or except for those that do know. Uh, if I was on the board, though, I would probably go to the SPED director and get a clearer understanding of that so that if I would have more knowledge on the situation so that I would be able to make an informed decision myself. Thank you. I guess I've got <coughs> to look at this a little bit differently as... Uh, um, something that I've always looked at my life with with uh, with kids and education is uh, the cognitive versus the social and emotional uh, learning and they used to teach us in school and in in student in student teaching uh, that uh, the cognitive skills the the math the English everything was very m which it is very important uh, I don't want to push that down but to me, what is even more important nowadays, and I don't know if, if it's a school board, but I think every adult, whether they're on a school board or whether they're a parent, whether they're a crossing guard, whether they are a bus driver, it doesn't matter. We are here for the kids. And if you can make a difference, if you can get to that kid to see the sparkle in his eye, to see the smile on his face, to see him standing around your classroom when the class is done, that maybe he wants to talk, maybe he has something to, to say, that just something to get off his chest, to listen to those kids. If you get those kids to want to be in your classroom, to want to be there, and I don't care who you are, it is, is our job as adults, is our job as the people to help all the kids, be there because once they're in the classroom and they want to learn, they will learn. But we've got to get them in that classroom to where we want them to make sure that, that they know that we are there for them and we want them to learn, and they will learn. I guess I'm with the, the majority of the people here. I don't know much about SEL, but like Mark suggested, if I had to make a decision that w involved it, I would sit down, find resources, educate myself on what it it does what it doesn't do, and uh, I, I've seen suggestions about it being critical race theory, this and that, and I would I would inform myself and make my own judgment on whether it does has whether that's involved in it or not, and then I'd make a decision based on an informed decision rather than an emotional one. Okay, so I was afraid of this. You were setting me up. For those that you don't know, my wife is the SPED director, and she is going through her doctoral program on trauma-based intervention, and honey, I swear I listen to you all the time, I do. But uh, uh, maybe not enough. Um, <laughs> Best answer of the night. <laughs> uh, to me, it, it's identifying these children and making sure they're ready to be educated. Do they have uh, problems at home? Are they socially, emotionally ready to be educated? Is there deficiencies that we as a school can help them with uh, to be able to educate them? Mandy, you'll start the answer to the next question. If elected, what do you hope to accomplish during your service as a board trustee? Well, I came a little prepared. So um, being the nature of being an educator, I do take notes and I have my binder here. But um, I had to really think about this one and um, I did do a little bit of homework and I did watch some other um, of the Zooms of candidates throughout the state. and. Um, I think I just am going to take kind of my perspective is some of the changes that I'd like to see, and this is for my teacher people, um, is I want to give them more planning time. Um, whatever that is, whatever the board can do to help them to be able to um, have time to create engagement, which is our district's goal this year, to be able to um, make engaging activities for those students, give them 
you know, potty breaks, um, you know, whatever it is, have a, a lunch. I want them to have that plenty of time. Um, I'd also like us to look into a little bit and dive in to collaborate on solutions for how we can, you know, um, retain and keep some subs in our districts as well. Um, and then the last one's probably a big one back to like our curriculum, but I know that our um, one thing I'd like to personally see is to be able to um, look in and reflect on our Y top scores and be able to ch make some changes. Um, we're doing a great job of, there's a lot of celebrations and amazing um, school members that um, employees, whether that, you know, that affect the kiddos, whether it's in, you know, just making that connection or relationship and building that up. But um, I think that there's a few things that we can, I mean, it's, it's education's that kind of evolving, so there are gonna be things that we wanna improve. Um, but I hope that those are some things that maybe I can help be a voice to and that people can come to me and staff members and whatnot to talk about. So, are you ready? This way. This way. So I think what I would like to accomplish is to, to be able to be supportive, of course, to the school district in any way that I can and up, uphold the values and the mission and the vision that have already been put in place, but also to try to educate the community at large and, and be open and transparent because I think a lot of people don't really understand everything that's going on. A and the more information that we can get out there and the more that we can talk to individuals or go talk to groups and, and let them ask us questions so they have a better understanding of what our role is, I, I think that's what I would like to accomplish because once we're all on the same page and we understand what's going on, it makes it easier to accomplish things. I would have to say that what I want is I gained such a great education from this school district and I want to see that continue and it, it, it and it can get we can do we can improve we can do better it, everything can get better and I want to be a part of that I want to be a part of bigger and better and brighter futures for our children I think that that's what I want to do thank you I would like to be the face that um, people see as, as being safe and somebody they can talk to, whether it be um, custodial, maintenance, teachers, all the way up. Um, just somebody that uh, the community can come to if they have questions. Um, if, I, if I don't know that, I will find it out. Um, I believe that we need to be very transparent in, in how we deal with um, our dealings as a school board. I think. Um, we need to explain things a little better maybe or make information more available to the community members, parents. And the number one goal always is give our kids the best education that we can, we can give them and put the people in the right places, the resources in the right places and, and be a driving force as a school board to set examples for the other districts around the state you know, make this place just a wonderful place for our kids and our community. And uh, we do have some pretty wonderful people out there that are doing their, their darndest to get things done. So thank you for that. I'd like to be part of the school board team. I mean, it's an effort. Uh, you know, you need to make all the meetings and put in the effort and all that, uh, obviously, but you know, it, it's a great effort, and out of the blue, there's arising challenges that always come up. Uh, and that takes up a lot of time and effort. You know, so you have all of those to roll on besides trying to make the district better, uh, you know, gain more students. If the oil field comes back, will you be able to support them, all that? you know there's always new and cha new challenges that I welcome it'd be great to have more community feedback uh, you know all, all the school board members have email addresses we we would love more uh, input you know 
good, bad, otherwise, from those of you with concerns. Uh, you know, there's a good crowd here, and there's good candidates here, so remember the faces. You know, if you catch whoever's elected walking down the street, be sure to say, hey, I have this concern. My kid is, you know, or my spouse works for the school district, whatever. Uh, feedback is what drives the district the best. Uh, all right. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll say to accomplish or to bring to the board, I'll just say honesty, CPRR, transparency, common sense, and listening. I guess I hope to bring a common sense approach to some of the, the some of the issues that the world's presenting us with it right now. Um, I'd also like to be a positive part of the continued tradition of providing our kids with a great education. I received a great education, my siblings also did, and I'd like to be a part of making sure that that, that continues to happen. The biggest thing I'd like to be is considered approachable. I, like Mark suggested, I want to be the person that p the community wants to come and talk to, voices their concerns, voices their appreciation, whatever the case may be. But I'm not I'm gonna be the kind of guy that waits for them to come to me. I would like I'm gonna I would like to openly ask people what they think, how we're doing, what and those kind of things. So that's what I'd look to. So for me I I would like to raise the level on college and life ready students. And what I mean that by that, for the college kids that are bound for college, we need to help them achieve higher ACT scores. It gives them more funding towards the Hathaway Scholarship. Um, and I think we need to stress that more. Uh, for the Life Ready students, uh, when I was on the board previously, we did a CDL graduate program. Uh, we partnered, I believe it was Savage Trucking because um, let's face it, some kids aren't going to go to school, and that's fine. There's, there's no harm in that. But they were able to go through this program right here at the high school, and when they graduated, they had a CDL, commercial driver's license. They could go drive water truck, tankers, whatever, uh, provide for their family, create a, a living. Um, running a, a large-scale power plant in this community right here, I will tell you, Employees are a commodity. It's hard to find people to go to work these days. Um, I'm currently, I, rough numbers, budget around 200 people in the Glenrock power plant. Uh, today I crunched some numbers. I'm down to 148 employees. That is not sustainable. We need people to go to work. So we need to do whatever it takes and groom the kids that aren't gonna go to college to where they can come to the plant and go to work as a mechanic, electrician, helper, uh, operator, whatever. Thank you. <laughs> this next question, Lisa will be the first to answer. Do you have an answer to this one? <laughs> oh, guys on both ends, I'm so sorry. Ty, you get an extra 30 seconds. <laughs> no, I just, uh, as a board member, I would just, I would want to be a positive, uh, you know, common sense, level-headed member, you know, support the board and our district and be a voice of the people if, uh, if there is concerns and, you know, stand up for what I do believe is right or wrong and, uh, you know, just be positive and support where the support is needed and stand up where I need to. And now, Lisa, we'll read the next question for you to start. My goal is not to forget you, Mandy, on the flip side. <laughs> what do you believe are the most important characteristics that you personally possess that lend themselves to being a board member? I think that one of my strengths would be the fact that I'm exceptionally open-minded and 
I like to think fair. My kids might not sometimes think so, but um, I like to listen to what both sides of the situation are because I think that everybody should have a voice and that voice matters and that that there, there is something in there, no matter how angry or how upset someone is, that's important. And it's important to hear what they have to say. So I, I really think that's one of the things that I like to bring to that, that and being level-headed enough to listen to them openly without you know, maybe hearing the emotion so much, but hearing where they're coming from. I would have to say that one of my, my best strengths is being a mom. I was a mom before I was actually a mom. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I, I was always, no matter what friend group I was in, I was the mother. I was the one they came to to talk to. I was the one that they would confide in and work through problems with, and I think that's my biggest strength. And the other one is working with people that don't necessarily agree with me. I know I have different views than a lot of people, but I am more than open to talk about our differences and work across aisles or however you want to look at it. I think those are my two biggest strengths on why I want to be part of this board. I think my biggest strength would probably be that um, this community is extremely important to me um, and the education of our children is extremely important to me. And learning with the right people how to do that well. Um, <coughs> in a manner that, that does. I mean, if our kids don't want to go to college, then, you know, they don't go to college. If they want to go to a trade school, they go to a trade school. If they just want to discover the planet, they discover the planet. But I want to be that person that um, can identify that and identify community needs for this school district and work with our community and make that happen. Dude, I'll, I'll give you a con, or uh, yeah, a con first. Public speaking is not my forte. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you noticed. Uh, anyhow, I kind of mirror Jeff. I really, in, in I am really involved in this community and you know I can sit here and give you my background that I've been on the board and uh, on the Converse County Rural Firefighters and all that but when it all gets boiled down to it I'm really concerned with the teachers and the students and the staff that come here every day and face all these challenges that are coming up to them. Uh, you know, every year there's something different that comes out. COVID, boy, that about wiped us out. And did, you know, we had to go to virtual learning and everything. And, you know, being on the board, you just kind of oversee. And I was really impressed how all the teachers and staff stepped up and were delivering meals and everything. And that gives you such a uh, makes you so proud to be part of the district and so I really enjoy that I think you know being on the board for eight years I do have a little experience and I would love to help uh, new board members coming on thank you I guess the characteristics uh, that I like to <coughs> bring of being a board member would be weighing all sides of a subject evenly. Listen to every side because just because it might be, quote, my idea doesn't make it the best idea. I think you get more and more people together and get everything together and bring da everything down. Because you g it gets the best idea that you can for everybody. Um, I also like to think that, that I'd like to bring my life experience experiences to the board. Uh, I've been around a while. Uh, I've got these gray hairs for a reason. <coughs> but uh, I'd, I'd like to, to, to be there to be able to share what I've learned in life and what I've seen in life and the history that I've, that I've been part of 
and to bring that to, uh, to the school district, bring that to the kids. Uh, I've talked to the kids for years. I don't talk around them. I doc don't talk above them. I talk to them. Um, a lot of people that know me know that I'm just a kid myself. And so I can sit down and I can visit with the kids and I know what's going on and I can give them honest answers. And I guess uh, being on the board, uh, being any type of adult, to make differences to the kids. And I guess that's uh, what I've wanted to do and through life experiences and working with the public and doing the different jobs that I've done, uh, especially working with the public has, I think, put me in a, in a, in a good position to be able to bring that uh, history, to bring, be able to bring that learning uh, back to the board to help them with some of the decisions and things and say, hey, this is the way I've seen it in the past. This is the way it's worked. Uh, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we make it better? Uh, that's for me. I think what I want to bring is an independent, open mind. I want to make my own decision based on the facts and the information that is presented and that I've gathered, rather than following the leader, I guess. Um, that's the type of person I've always been. I currently am a production foreman for one of the largest oil company, independent oil companies in the U.S. And through being, I have a great team that we use a collaborative environment to come up with solutions to decisions or solutions to issues and figure out ways to save money. Since we've created this team, we've decreased our cost by 42% while increasing our efficiency by 38%. That's the kind of stuff that I would like to bring to the school board. Now, I'm not delusional to think that, that I can do that for school board by any means, but I'd like to, like to offer that and at least be a part of trying to help, help with our school board solutions. Um, like Mark said, public speaking is not it. That's not my forte, and I'll be the first to admit it. But I have a, a results, fact-based decision maker that does not rely on, does, that tries not to let emotion affect those. So I would say honesty, integrity, and being direct. If you ask me a direct question, I will absolutely give you a direct answer. Um, with that, I will actively listen, meaning I will listen to understand what you're saying rather than to formulate a response to you. Uh, I think that's a major problem we have in this country is people listen to reply rather than to understand what you're being told. Thank you. I think uh, my biggest strength that I'd bring to the board is uh, is respect. I, I truly think I respect everyone. Um, I have huge respect for teachers and administration and what they do and the most respect for children. And But I think everybody deserves respect and if, you know, so what they have to say matters. Even if you don't agree with it, you have to consider their side and, you know, you might have to find a place in the middle and I, I just think I can, uh, I'm able to respect people and their thoughts and their emotions and make an informed decision and uh, go from there. Um, I'm kind of giving a compliment to my husband here because one of the strengths that he's always shared with me is um, relationships um, that I have with students. And also that's kind of the feedback that I've always been given is it's not necessarily the score or whatnot, but it was always the relationships. And that was something as being a reading specialist that I was able to always work with students. And I may not have gotten, you know, to what I wanted to in that small seven, 10 minute window, but it was the connection that I had with students, whether they came in in the morning and saw me, whether they needed a book or whether they just needed to talk to me about something that was going on. Um, I believe some of my strengths is some of my weaknesses. You know, my upbringing, upbringing isn't necessarily that I had a fabulous education. Um, going to 11 elementary schools definitely makes me um, more empathetic and open-minded to helping all different types of students and building those relationships. So I think probably my best is 
those relationships, and I hope that these wonderful, <laughs> you know, these candidates, we all just have such great intentions, and I think as long as we're all open-minded and we are, you know, look at each other's e ideas, I think we're going to, you know, have a great this year, so thank you. Tania, you'll start the next question's answer. What we have left for time, guys, we're going to be able to do this last question, and then we're going to wrap up with you guys giving a synopsis of what you'd like to finish, just kind of a final statement. What should student achievement look like at CCSD1? Student achievement should look like we're acknowledging when our kids are doing good, um, showcasing how well they're doing and what they're doing in each aspect of the curriculum. I think that it's really important to show them that we do see them and we know that they're doing good and to acknowledge that. That acknowledgement in those kids will send them through the roof with pride. And I think that pride then sends that kid into amazing places in the future. The more we can build up our kids and showcase what they're doing well, the better they will be as adults. I think success looks like kids that want to come to school, kids that enjoy being at school, kids that are told that we're glad to have you here, um, kids that feel like they belong to something that's important. And the end result is kids that actually get their diploma and become the things that they want to be in their lifetime and are life ready. That's what success looks like to me. I guess I agree with all the statements. Uh, it's giving them, them the desire to come to school and enjoy it. Um, make each and every subject challenging for them to where they want to learn. And when they do learn that, then they have a sense of accomplishment that they they did well and you know that's part of it and like Jeff uh, said you know I want to see them graduate and whether they want to go into the military or they would like to go into a vocational career or go on to a university uh, that's a great accomplishment for them, and I hope they take pride in it. I, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I guess what I'd, I see in student achievement look like is, we see it every day around here, uh, our kids that have grown up, left school to go see the big wide world, and, and when I was in the classroom or in the bus, Kids will say, boy, I'm not going to come back to this town. I'm going to go live life in the big cities. And within four or five years, guess what? Those kids are coming back to Douglas. And they want to raise their families here. And they want their kids to go to school here. And uh, uh, they've sought, they've lived some life, and they say, hey, I have the, I've had it the best way I, that I know of right where I was from. And the kids that we have coming back home that are teachers now, that are, that are working in our area that uh, are helping out because they want to be back home. And so I think that uh, we in the school district over years have achieved a lot because those kids have, because of the teachers and because of the people that they've interacted with, they found out that Douglas is a place they want to be. I think student achievement is different for every student. I think the one thing that, you, that is common is when a student is proud of himself. If he's proud of himself for the things that he's done, then I think that's student achievement. Also, I think that no matter what, if, if another common is that uh, student achievement can be based on, are they going to be a positive member of society? Are they going to help out in any way, shape, or form? And that can be anything. Whether it's, but as long as they're making it, 
an improvement in somebody else's life or they're positive in, in, in our environment, I think that's student achievement. I can't disagree with anything that I've heard so far, but I would add to that individual success. Um, you may have a student that has, the best they've ever done has gotten three math problems right. Well, today they got five right. That's absolutely achievement and they need to be recognized for it. And when you do that, it creates that excitement in the student to where they want to go to school. They're excited to go back to school. They want to see their teacher. It becomes their safe haven. And I think our schools need to be their safe haven. Thank you. I think uh, student accomplishment should uh, be, like he said, uh, on an individual basis, but it should be uh, recognized. I think all kids want to be, want to accomplish something and be recognized for it. And I think that will uh, become habit forming and, and they'll become a better person for it. And I think our district does do a good job of making kids want to go to school and, and uh, enjoy being there, even the ones that don't admit it. I think, you know, if they accomplish something and, and are recognized, they, they build from there. Um, being, am I the last one, right? No, you're the last one. Okay. I feel like when you're at the end, you're kind of complimenting everything that everyone says as well. But in addition to student achievement, you know, it may not be a grade or score or if you're college bound, I think it's also looking at, you know, the student being proud, you know, them coming back. Maybe they learned to tie their shoelace. Maybe they understood a vocab word. Maybe they, um, helped someone else out, you know, maybe their, however their personal growth is. Um, student achievement is more individual, um, whether your student is, you know, on grade level or, you know, they're below grade level or they're a GT student. They have disabilities. Their um, growth and their achievement is all individual based. And I think whatever it takes, you know, that's kind of where we go to is those small little light bulbs and aha moments and celebrating those so that we can build on that and just help them grow even additionally more. Thank you. Last one is, uh, yeah, it's real. Um, but just to build off of what everybody else has said, because like what they've said is absolutely true, but really giving them the tools that they need to move forward into the rest of their life because even though they think that right now is is everything they've got so much ahead of them and helping them to realize that they can do this and they can go forward and giving them the tools to help them to move forward in the rest of their life all right so we're going to go back and start with mr bollinger if you would just take up to two minutes and just tell us, it's your chance to maybe differentiate what would you be as a candidate as opposed to someone else. If there's, I know it's difficult when we've answered the same question and we've gone down the line and you've heard the same thing, but each of you are running for an individual reason or you wouldn't be on the ballot. So tell us, maybe sell yourself a little bit to the audience as to why you would be the preferred candidate in what is it that you can bring to the table that you feel sets you apart and makes you unique. So I'll give you two minutes each, starting with Mr. Bollinger. Um, I, I honestly, I, it, it's selfish reasons. I, I want back on the school board because I absolutely enjoy being on the school board. It, I felt a sense of community when I was on the board. I enjoyed the folks that I served with on the board. And I'm willing to uh, offer what I can to, to help not only the district, but the community. Um, I absolutely have zero hidden agenda. So this is kind of a tough question for me. Um, so yeah, it's selfish reasons. I, it, it was self-fulfillment for me, I should say. Thank you. For me, I think I want to, uh, I want to be a part of the school board because I want to be an influence in my children and my children's friends and it lives as far as their education goes. I feel that I am an open-minded person that that likes to just that likes to solve solutions, come up with um, come up with 
sometimes out of the box, but most of the time just common sense solutions to a lot of the issues that we face nowadays. Um, I, uh, and uh, I just, I just like being a part of the community. If I can, if I can, uh, if it's, if it's one way that I can be more of a part and more of a positive influence in the community, that's what I want. I guess my idea was, and, and uh, like I said, I've spent 37 years with the district. I spent over 40, 45 years uh, in education. I've spent most of my life dealing with people. I guess uh, I'm a helper. Um, anybody needs a help, I'm always ready to jump in and help. And um, I'm on my way not with the district anymore, but uh, I have a ranch to run and a family to run and grandchildren to be around. But uh, I want to be there still for the kids because that's what I've been my whole life. And uh, if I can help the kids become the best that they can be, uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, yeah, kind of mirror what Jim said. Uh, it's the pride of being part of the community and the eyes and the ears for the school board with the concerns and all that. I also feel that, you know, with eight years of experience, I would be able to help the new board members with six seats open. There could be a dynamic change in everything. And I feel that with experience, might be able to guide and help the newer board members coming on. And it is a tough challenge when you get on the board. It's, a, you know, a pretty steep learning curve. But I, I'd i really like to make sure that, you know, my son coming up through the school district that, you know, that things kind of maintain for him and that there's always the possibility of better things for him. Thank you. Thank you for your service, Doug, Mark. Um, <clears throat> I believe that we all have a huge responsibility together as community and school board. I think um, I would like to be a part of this to bring the board and the community closer together so we can work together. Um, the, a pointed finger should never be pointed at anything but the truth. And I think we're all looking for the best way to educate our children, to make our children happy, and to provide you know, the best life we can provide for our kids. And that's why I want to be here. I want to be you know, a part of a happy ending, as many of them as, as I can be a part of. Uh, I don't. I don't think that our school district is bad. I don't think that uh, it's anything but good. I think that, and the only direction we can go is up. So, I think if I'm going to complain about anything, then we need to step up and do something, bring a solution to the table. And I just want to be a part of that. Um, I know there are some great people in the school district. I got to work beside them, with them, and I would just like to be um, part of some of these kids' future that, you know, our community can be proud of, and we have a lot of them out there now. So thank you for your evening, and uh, have a good rest of your week. I think that I am a good fit for this board because I on top of having kids in the school system, I have the privilege of working with a lot of kids at the Boys and Girls Club and the Independent Living Services. And so I see how important their education is and how awesome it was when I was here. And I think that I could be a very good asset and I could really bring a mental health advocacy part to the board if I was elected. So thank you for your time tonight. So after being in this community for almost 18 years, um, I spent 13 years of it 
working for nonprofits here, it is just the next way that I can like help to give back to my community because I feel like this community has given so much to me in any way that I can give back to it and try to represent other people's voices. I, I feel like that's, you know, the best thing you can do is, is to be a part of your community and do that. Um, I've put four kids and one grandchild through the school system here and it's probably after living in way too many states, probably one of the best school systems I've seen. So thank you for your time. Um, I just want to say, wow, like we have a, a lot of great candidates. And after even hearing more, um, I think we would be blessed to be able to have any of us to be added to the um, school board as well. Um, one of my, I think my unique traits besides, you know, just having that background in education is I just, I can't take the educator side out of me. I was born to be able to work with students and I love it, absolutely love it. And I'm not gonna stop doing it. Um, they mean the world to me. And if there's any way that, whether it's my experience or um, that I would be able to be an asset to help I know that I'd be able to, you know, um, work with people to be able to do what's best for the students and ultimately if there's that bridge that we need to help with the community and, you know, to help improve things, um, I'm going to keep working for kids. So thank you and thanks for coming tonight. Uh, I think I can bring a, a level-headed, um, open-minded opinion to to the board, uh, I, I you know my my main concern is the kids, and I think I could be uh, like I said, open-minded enough, but strong enough to stand up for change if needed, and also stand up if it's not broken. We don't need to change it, and um, like I said, as long as the kids are are doing getting the best, then we can leave it the same. But if not, we really need to fight for them, and that's why I'm getting on the board is for the kids and. I've always had the excuse I'm too busy or don't have time, but I think it's time to step up and do my part. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to give a round of applause to all the candidates. <coughs> the intention of, inf of a forum is to give you the opportunity as a voter to have more information about who you're going to make the selection for so you make your best choice possible. I feel like we got great answers tonight. You all were very ex respectful, and I appreciate that greatly. Audience, thank you very much for your respect and decorum. That was also greatly appreciated. We got through a lot more questions than we anticipated we'd be able to, so that was wonderful to hear your voices. I do know these candidates would love to hear from you if you have further questions or you just wonder more about their particular ideas. I know they're all available from now until election time to be able to answer those questions for you. So this is one format from which you can get the information, but there are several other formats from which you can get that information, especially a personal contact with these guys. Sorry, now your phones are gonna light up. <laughs> but I would like to also once again thank Douglas Education Association for hosting, Douglas Budget, Conver uh, Converse County Bank, and Boys and Girls Club for sponsoring this evening, and thank you all for coming. Have a good night. <laughs>